Martin. Welcome to our Friday podcast, Bible study as we greet you in the name of the Lord. We are welcoming you every Friday at noon. We thank you for taking time to join us as we want to bring you a few things that will you can take away that will give you something to stand on and reinforce what you already think. But we want to invite you to take another look at what you believe, to make sure it lines up with the Bible and that there's no doubt about where you're going to be when we get to the end of this road. Yeah. And it looks like we're approaching it pretty quickly. Things are changing. We go with the news and we're informed of things that seem really extreme, but we have already been warned because we've been reading our Bible and we know what it says mm -hmm. about what's coming in these days. So we are not afraid, but we are prepared. We're going to concentrate and make sure that we stay in our word and we're not going to be guilty of the falling away that's been talked about in uh, Hebrews 3 and 12 that says, take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. And in Matthew 24, 10, it also says, at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Mm -hmm. We look at what's going on and we see the lawlessness that's happening. We see uh, how people are treating one another with no good reason. And we wanna make sure that we're not distracted to the point that we become discouraged and say, well, what's the use? And we get focused on all of the evil that's happening around us. We wanna know that we have to stay where we are to be in the word. And the word tells us how to respond to these things. We're gonna keep on being loving. We're gonna keep on uh, seeking God for direction and asking him to order our steps daily. We want our families to see us responding in a way that's gonna be pleasing to God so that they too will know how they are to respond. Our family focus is very important. We are modeling things for them. You know, they pay attention mm -hmm. to what we say, but more importantly, they watch what we do. So we can't say we're going to be walking in the word and then we're going to stumble and not do it. Please pay attention to your families. Draw them close. Talk to them. Have conversations about what's happening. Show them the scriptures that will help them to, to digest and to decipher what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And Brother Andrew, Elder Andrew is going to come with a lesson that's going to give you more steps to follow as we proceed through this life together. Thank you. Bless God you, bless girl. you. That's true. Thought I was going to get a kiss or something, you know, <laughs> lean this way. Afterwards. Don't tease me. <laughs> oh, dude, oh, dude, looking for a kiss. Praise the Lord and glory be to God on this great, beautiful Friday at noon. I thank God for you guys coming in. I thank God for the words that uh, our sister May, my wife, spoke uh, in terms of the apostasy. I mean, it's just that the devil's trying to move us out of the place of blessings and his means I'm seeing is the means of division. Um, I heard uh, Brother Hewitt last night, uh, he gave some good points on how we are just so divided in this society, uh, not only in the world, but in the church. So my brothers and sisters, we have to put on our discerning hats and know when the devil is in the place and know what to do about it. Praise the Lord once again. I see you, Kalisa Whitehead, Minister Bell, Sister Dora, uh, Pastor, my girl, you got to call us, Pastor Diane Washington, uh, Kalisa Whitehead, I love you, girl. Uh, Dr. John Lucas, I enjoyed you Wednesday night, Doc, giving us that thing on patient, and patience and what we should be doing while we wait. Sister Sharon Drake, my delightful sister from Greater Grace, uh, Sharon Williams, loving you guys, and thank you for taking the time to come on and just be in the audience. I ask that you like and you love uh, just for us. That's for us. And I'd like for you to comment. That's for us, too. And your comments don't always have to agree. You can disagree. And if there's any questions or prayer requests, know that we are available for you. Glory be to God. Precious Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
as we come before your people today, we come, Lord, asking, Lord, that you put a super on our natural, Lord, that they may have spiritual as well as natural things. Let them hear, Lord, what you have ordained for them to hear for such a time as this. Now guide me, Lord, and I promise, Lord, to lift you up. I promise to give your name the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Like to call for your attention to First uh, Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I declared, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to scripture. I'd like to speak to you for a few moments today of the topic, the good news. Good news God has sent to the world. And if you have good news, there's also bad news. The good news came to replace bad news. The bad news says that we were all born in sin. I think Psalms 51 and 5 says that we were shapen in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. Romans 6 and 23 says the bad news is that the wages, the price that we had to pay just for being born in this world, we were born with that judgment of death and destruction, death and hell, just for being born in this world, for the wages of sin is death. And I told you time and past that death is not the end, my brothers and sisters, but death is the beginning. When you die, you're going to open up your eyes. If it's such a thing, you're going to see the God, the Lord, the Prince, the, the Savior sitting there ready to, I say, exit you, but escort you either either to heaven or to hell. Nobody is smart enough to miss both places. You're going to go either to hell or to heaven. And I told you in times past that heaven was a prepared place for people that are prepared. And hell is also a prepared place for a people who did not prepare themselves. This place called hell is a place where we're going to be tormented. And I say we, I don't, I don't, I'm using the wrong pronoun. People will be tormented. I don't plan to go. And they're going to be tormented both day and night. Fire that never goes out. Hell is not a place that you and I want to go to. So that's the bad news, but the good news, Jesus is sinning. The scriptures say he died for our sins, that Jesus paid the price for the price that we all owe was our lives, death, hell, and destruction. But Jesus died in our place. The Bible said he that knew no sin was made sin, that you and I can become the righteousness of God. What good news that we have. And, and, and that good news that Jesus paid the price is for everyone who are willing to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. Don't say that Jesus is your Lord and you don't do what he says. The scripture says in Luke 6 and 46, why ye call ye me? 
Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. My brothers and sisters, we're going to find out what Jesus said. And if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, that means you are doing exactly what Jesus told you to do. But if you're not following what Jesus has told you to do, then he is not your Lord, nor is he your Savior. You see, this good news is found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's called the Gospels, the Gospels of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, my brothers and sisters, I've heard many ministers and pastors say that the whole Bible is gospel because the whole Bible is good news. I agree with them on that point, but I must bring to your attention that the gospel of Jesus Christ is housed in four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is the theme, it is the center of the whole Bible, the whole 66 books, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where Jesus came, died, was buried, and resurrected. It is the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, for each one of them told the story of his death, burial, and resurrection through their own eyes, but many of them were saying pretty much the same thing, that Jesus, God, came down to the earth. This is good news, you all. He uh, came down as a man. Jesus was the flesh of God, and the flesh of God was on the cross. The flesh of God died, but God himself could not die. But anyway, that same body was resurrected. God came into that body and that body was resurrected. And we it, it was witnessed by many people that Jesus rose again. My God, what great news. And because Jesus rose again, the Bible is saying the good news is that you and I are going to rise again. And that's our hope, you all, that the Lord is coming back for us, that we can put on a resurrected body, that we can spend all eternity with Christ. These four books are so powerful that uh, Genesis through Malachi, the whole Old Testament, points to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You see, even when the Bible starts its printing, in Matthew 3 and 15, we see the Messianic promise. It's a promise that uh, the Messiah is coming. It's going to be born of a woman. It's going to suffer, but it's going to triumph over Satan and evil. You see, in Isaiah 9 and 6, uh, a, a son, a child is born, and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You see the Old Testament pointing to these powerful books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We see even in Isaiah 53 that he was going to be wounded for my transgression, bruised, for my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was going to be upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed both physically and spiritually. All of these scriptures pointed to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, our happy books, the good news books, even in Michael, Five and two, I believe. It tells where he was even going to be born. He was going to be born in Bethlehem. So the wise men already knew where he was going to be born because all of the prophets, all of the scripture pointed to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Man, these are powerful books. They are powerful books with information and good news for all of us. And then when we get to the New Testament, we find in Romans all the way to Revelation, they are pointing back 
to the gospels. Even Paul says in Romans 1 and 16 that he wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he realized that the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the power of God for salvation. My God, I see in 1 Peter, 2 Peter 5 and 17, it says that judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if the righteous are scarcely saved, woe unto the ungodly and them that obey not the gospel of God. My brothers and sisters, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are milestone books that all of us should take heed, read, and study because they are the center of everything that God has done for mankind. Glory be to God. So when we look at the, the New Testament, we see that it's divided into three divisions. The first division is the Gospels. The second division is Acts. And the third division is the Epistles. My brothers and sisters, for the next 10 minutes, listen to me precisely. Don't walk out of the room. Turn the television off because you got to understand how God has laid this down and he's laid this down that even a blind man, Stevie Wonder say, I can see it, can see God's plan of salvation. When we look at the gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see this. We see the birth of Jesus Christ. We see the life of Jesus Christ. We see the ministry of Jesus Christ. We see the miracles of Jesus Christ. We see him calling the apostles out in the gospels. My God, and I want you to pay special attention. He didn't just call these 12 just because he was lonely. He called these 12 because he wanted to teach them how to reach them. And that's what they did. They taught people how to reach people. It all started with these apostles. So my Lord chose 12 apostles. And then the book of uh, the, the gospels tell of the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. And they also tell you this, that after he rose from the grave, he came back to these apostles. One scripture said that he opened up their understanding that they may understand spiritual things, that they may understand what the prophets were saying, what Psalms were saying, what Moses was saying concerning his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and then what he did is he deposited the information into them that they may give it unto us. In Matthew 28 and 19, he says, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That was a command, y'all. And then he says in Mark 16 and 15, he said, go and preach the gospel. This is how important this was. He said to every creature, everybody on the earth, he said, go and preach the gospel to every creature and listen to what he says. We, we can stop here and do a lesson, my brothers and sisters. Listen to what he said. He said, those that believe in the gospel, the good news that I came, I died, I was buried, I was resurrected. Those who believe and is baptized shall be saved. My brothers and sisters, that's a template. You can't just believe in the finished work of Christ that many denominated the nations are teaching. He said, those that believe in the finished work that I did and is baptized, they shall be saved. And those that don't believe, in other words, who are not going to be baptized, they are damned. Mark 16 and 15. 
I ain't making this up. This is what Jesus said. And then you look in Luke 24, and I think 46, it says that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name, starting here in Jerusalem unto all the nations. Repentance and remission of skin, sins. And then we find in the last gospel book, John 3 and 5, it says that except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into heaven, the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, you didn't hear faith one time. You didn't hear Jesus tell them that all they had to do was believe not one time. Because Jesus knew that when they preach the gospel and they believe it, they had to obey it. Never talked about faith. He talked about obedience. My brothers and sisters, this is where we are in the world of Christendom today. God is telling you that if you believe it, you're going to obey it. Now, the next segment of the New Testament is Acts. Acts is the Acts of the Apostles, the one that Jesus told or called, the one that he input his information and direction, the one that he trained for the years that he was on this earth. They put legs on what Jesus told him to do in the Gospels. The Bible says, and I believe John 6, John 17, he said, Father, I pray not just for these, these apostles, but I pray also for them that will believe on me through their words. My brothers and sisters, whatever the apostles said, it is what Jesus said, and we should be right there in the Gospels and in Acts to find out what Jesus said that you and I have to do to be saved. And I tell you, in Acts, the second chapter, verse number 38, when Peter stood up and preached the Gospel, they said, men and brethren, talking to Peter, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter says to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, this was a fulfillment of everything that Jesus told them to tell them. In Matthew, he told them to be baptized. In Mark, he said, if you believe the gospel, you shall, shall be baptized. In Luke, he says, Re a remission of repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name. And in John, he says, except a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter heaven. Now, I, I, I don't want you angry, but I do want you to take another look at what you believe. And my brothers and sisters, even if you believe it, like I believe it, then you should make sure you pay attention, take notes, because now you're responsible to reach one. You're responsible to take this gospel to somebody else and tell them what the truth is all about. My brothers and sisters, the next segment of the New Testament is the epistles, the letters to the churches. And this is where most people think they are finding salvation. There is no salvation in the book of Romans through Revelation. Nobody got baptized. Nobody got filled with the Holy Ghost. In fact, these people, as I said, were already churches. They had already come through the book of Acts. 
They had already been baptized in the name of Jesus. They had already been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's why they were a church. So when you next time you go to those books, go to the first chapter. In Rome, it'll tell you that we're writing. Uh, Paul is writing to the church at Rome. And in, in, in Corinthians, he's writing to the church at Corinth. In, in Ephesians, he's writing to the church of the saints at Ephesus. These people, my brothers and sisters, already obeyed the gospel. They already did what Jesus told them to do. It wasn't Peter. It was Jesus telling them that. When we look in Matthew, the 16th chapter, this is what we find. Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Some says Elijah, some says uh, uh, Jeremiah, some says one of the prophets. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't give you that. But that came from my father, which was in heaven. He said, Peter, I'm going to call you the rock. And upon this rock, that revelation of God being Christ in the flesh, that revelation upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And Peter, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't care how much you fight the truth. It ain't going to prevail. His church is going to stand. His truth is going to shine straight through darkness, whether you accept it or not. He said, I'm going to build my church. And he said, that, look, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And my brothers and sisters, in the book of Acts, when the church first started, there were people from all over the known world, religious leaders, and they were there. And when the Holy Ghost fell out in that upper room and they heard those people speak in these languages that they recognized because not only did they speak their language, they had their dialect. I mean, these were uneducated people speaking perfect dialect in languages that was in Jerusalem. And my brothers and sisters, some of them mocked them and said they were drunk on new wine. And Peter never disputed that they were drunk. He said, but they are not drunk as ye suppose. For this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that on the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Glory be to God. This is that that was prophesied. This is that that was prophesied by the prophets. Remember, Ephesians says that the church is built upon the prophets and apostles and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. These people are coming together to give us a light, to give us a vision, to let us know how good the news is that we have accepted the truth of the gospel and we have acted on it through the book of Acts. So he began to preach. This is that, y'all. And he talked about how God has sent Jesus and that you guys have crucified him. But the same Christ that you have crucified, the same Jesus that you crucified, Peter said that God has made him both Lord and Christ. And when they heard that, their hearts were pricked. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And my brothers and my sisters, nobody said to give uh, uh, Peter and the rest of the apostles the right hand of fellowship. Nobody said, ask the Lord to come into your heart. Nobody said, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. They said the same old question, giving us the same old answer today. Repent every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the Spirit, uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost. For if you have not that Spirit of Christ, the Bible says you are none of his. So I tell you, as I conclude, you know I ain't finished, but I just want to tell you about this good news. 
those letters that was written to the churches, Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, and to people in the gospel of faith, Timothy, uh, James, uh, 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 John, Jude, all of these people were in the faith. All of these people were Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized folk. In fact, Jude told us to contend for the faith that you got when you believe the gospel and in Acts, when you obey the gospel, contend for it. For there are people that are crept in trying to change the formula and the template that God has given us. These letters that was written to the churches were never written, brothers and sisters, to replace the plan of salvation. Remember, they were never written to people who were not saved. They were written to the born again believers in that church. In Rome, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. These were pe the people that were already saved. Ain't no sinner was sitting in the pews, you all. He was talking to the church. In the church at Ephesus, uh, by grace, uh, uh, through, by grace through faith, uh, faith through grace are you saved, not of yourself. You can't boast. He ain't talking to people who are not saved. They are already saved. Look through the book and see how many times he talk about the works that you had to work. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you have to, like I taught last week, ask God for wisdom, the wisdom that comes from above. You got to have knowledge and understanding to be a wise person. Many of us know what the Bible says, but we don't understand what it says. The Jews knew that Jesus was coming as the Messiah, but they had the knowledge, but they didn't understand. To the Greek, the cross was foolishness and stupid to them. To many of us, being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues is foolishness. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense. My brother, you need to pray for the wisdom of God that this good news will not turn into bad news and you end up in this place called hell. My brothers and my sisters, it's right there. The books that you are choosing to follow for salvation is not salvational books. If you don't come through Acts, if you come through uh, books before Acts for the New Testament church, if you try to come from Genesis all the way to Malachi to be in the New Testament church, you come too soon. If you come from Romans to Revelation, you've come too late in order to have the good news that God's death took away your sins, you got to come through repentance, being baptized in the name of Jesus for what? The remission of your sins. My brothers and sisters, who wouldn't want to be baptized in the name of Jesus? I don't care what anybody say, I'll be running to the altar because he died for you. It's his blood and his church. And because it's his church, he made the rules. My brothers and sisters, if you want membership, you got to go back and study what he told the apostles to do in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you got to see that they obeyed the, the dictates, the words, the command of God. And they did just what he said. In Acts 2 and 38, the church began. In Acts 10, 44 through 48, the Gentiles got a chance to come in through Cornelius' house, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Ephesus Church was started in, in Acts 19, verses 1 through 5. John the Baptist's disciples didn't know there was a Holy Ghost. When they heard it, they did what you should be doing. They went down in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, and then they received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. 
This is my last scripture, and y'all know where I'm going. Those of you paying attention to me as we talk about taking another look, I'm going to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse number eight. It says that God is coming back with his angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and them that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot obey that Jesus was uh, born, that he died, that he was buried, and that he was resurrected. You cannot obey that, but you can obey what Jesus said. He said, repent. He said, be baptized in his name. And he said, be filled with his spirit. That's what he said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you haven't done that, then you're not, you're not walking in good news. You're going to be walking and bad news. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the good news. We thank you, Lord, for having a mind to be able to see, to understand, and to receive, Lord, your simple plan of salvation. Let us, Lord, those that are listening, Lord, let them take another look. Let them understand, Lord, that only what you have done and what you have said it's going to last. We give your name the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you guys for another Friday at noon. I see you, Carolyn Hall. We're going to call you soon, baby. Jacqueline Davis, my new friend. Sylvia Ellis, I hope you vacation out, girl, because y'all sure enough made us jealous. Jealous. Cheryl Plenty, my Church of Pentecost sister who we love so very, very much. I think I called everybody else. Uh, Joe Hewitt, man, that sexology class is off the hook. Bro, you're a, you a teacher's teacher. Enjoyed you last night, my brother. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Luann Lucas is from Chicago. Glory be to God. Took time out to pay a little attention to us today, and we thank you so much for that, Lou. I think I got... Timothy Brown, my, the Reverend, the fireball Timothy Brown, uh, we love you, man. We see that your son is doing great, man, with a great future, praying that God continue to bless him and his skills. Flo Little, Florida, Flo Ride Little, my girl from Solomon's Temple, haven't seen her in a long time, but she communicates with us from time to time. We love you. We thank all of you for taking time to stop by to hear what God is saying through this vessel. We know our podcast is simply take another look at what you believe to make sure that what you believe is what the word of God is saying that you need to get into this place called heaven. My brothers and sisters, I'm hoping that all of our last days would be our best days and that heaven would be our home. Until the next time, you guys be blessed. Love you to life in Jesus' name.